these fellas. We want them to introduce themselves. How about that? Uh, we are glad to have, uh, we have uh, three national pastors with us right now. And we hope to get a fourth one after about the 10th or 12th of October. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I hope so because we got a bunch of churches during that time in November. Uh, but we have our, our brother just led the singing, Brother Joseph from uh, the Philippines. We have Brother Gideon from Thailand. Raise your hand if you would so you know who, who we're talking about. And, um, and then Brother George from in Kenya, Africa. So we're going to have each of them come up and just give a, a two or three minutes of introduction. Now you're going to hear a lot from them in the next few weeks uh, because we have no other churches. There's no other churches in America meeting from 11 to 12 Wednesday morning, okay? Uh, you're the only ones. And since we are here, anyhow, we're going to be in all these services. So they're all going to have a turn to preach on Sunday and the next couple of weeks. We're going to, your conference is going to be like a Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday uh, kind of thing. And, and so we're going to have, we'll have them here a lot. So you get a chance to hear them preach 15 different messages and... Uh, no, probably not that much. <laughs> but uh, we just want them to just say howdy and tell a little bit about where they're from. And uh, then you can ask questions afterwards a little bit. But I want you to start us right off. You let the singing come right up here and just uh, share a couple minutes about who you are and what you're doing. Well, uh, my name is uh, Joseph Angwai from the northern part of the Philippines. The northern part of the Philippines is a mountainous area. The uh, climate is uh, cool and some parts is very cool. And by God's grace, uh, a missionary from this country, from Texas, came to our place and uh, he started evangelizing people and uh, one of them is my father. He got saved under his ministry and eventually uh, his children. He brought his children to the church. So I grew up as a Sunday school kid. After high school, I uh, studied in the Bible school of that uh, missionary. So, uh, in way back 1981, I graduated, and since then, I engaged myself in the uh, ministry. Concerning the uh, place where I came from, it is called the uh, Cordillera Administrative Region. What is common to these uh, provinces is, it is a tribal provinces and uh, common it is a pagan region where they butcher pigs then they call on the spirits of the dead dead ones dead relatives and uh, I am thankful that uh, a missionary from this country came to us because if not, I do not know what will be our condition now. Mm. I am thankful that in spite that uh, that missionary already went to heaven, he left a legacy, a school, a church, a trained nationals or trained natives of that uh, region, and we are continuing the work of the Lord. Thank you. Mm. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Gideon Tuang, and I have uh, one wife and uh, one son. And my wife is now pregnant, uh, another baby to come by the grace of by the grace of God. And I got saved at the age of uh, 18 year, years old. And uh, now I am in the ministry in 2018. We planted a church uh, in Myawadi between Thailand and Myanmar. Uh, but now, uh, until uh, this year, 
but because of the ongoing war surrounding our town, uh, we uh, we could no longer stay in that town and to continue our our ministry there. So our uh, we want to uh, move in inside Thailand and continue to reach our uh, Burmese fellow in Thailand who come to Thailand. So please continue to pray for us. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Um, this morning, I think it's still morning. <laughs> uh, my names are George Kumo. And uh, Fall of Baptist Church is my home. Mm. <laughs> I visited here uh, back in 1922. That is when I met my brother, Pastor Tuning, and his wife, and the family. And Lily, uh, since I visited here, and uh, the church became like our home, and Lily was present to be here, and the church took me for support. Lily, the Lord has blessed the work of the Lord in Kenya because when I was here, I had just only five churches from my church, the Red Baptist Church. At this time, I have uh, planted a hundred churches. Wow. The ones that I take care of are 60 because others now are independent churches. And uh, also I have a, a Bible college, Liberty Baptist Bible College, which has also started another three Bible schools. And another one is to be started in January. So uh, I want to ask you to pray for me. As we prepare, I took my brother, Nikabaka, Two weeks ago to that area and he met a lot of young people and the pastor there Robert uh, he told him I go to he has eight churches that he is overseeing that young man and so uh, he talked about that we start a Bible school there the reason why we start other Bible schools is because one of the transportation and the maintenance of the school. Because when they come to Elbridge, <coughs> about a hundred kilometers or more than that, we help them to go back. We give them transport to go back to their places. Because most of them, they come from poor places and their churches are young, we are not able to transport them. So, uh, I have that burden today of uh, doing the work of supervising being the principal of uh, Liberty Baptist Bible College and overseeing other Bible institutes. I'm happy to tell you that uh, Five years ago, uh, Brother Nicobar came and preached in my, in, my, in my church, and my son committed his life uh, to the ministry, and he has taken over to be the pastor, the pastor of Elred Baptist Church, which has many ministries, not only overseeing the uh, Bible schools, we have also a ministry of distributing literatures and, and Bibles. I think the other time I passed here, we were with Brother Edward Stanley. Edward Stanley is collecting Bibles from mission literature and sending to Africa. He has sent two containers, three containers of Bibles to our church. And so we have a ministry of uh, distributing those Bibles in different countries. 
I think to, um, Sunday uh, I'll put my board, my prayer board there, and I'll show you the six countries that I am involved in reaching those people the gospel and even distributing Bibles. It is very costly and is uh, tearing me out, and, but uh, by the grace of God, uh, I'm happy uh, to be here again after 20, 22 years and share with you what God has done with your support and your prayers. Amen. Lily, Lily, I want to say thank you, thank you, and uh, I believe whatever I'm doing there, you are part of that. A pastor trained in our colleges, you are part. Not small what you give, but is from the Lord and from the love this church has for the mission in Africa and in Kenya. Uh, my wife sent greetings to her, uh, to, to you, because <laughs> uh, 2015, I visited her, we visited different places, and we came here, we spent two days, and therefore, uh, when I was coming, she said, greet that family of Pastor Tuning and the whole church. And therefore, God bless you and continue doing the great work of God. Because the little Paul Baptist Church is, is a home of many, many missionaries. I believe uh, the pastor has given more than uh, 400 computers. I came here and I went back with a computer. You wrote me a letter and I went through all the immigration and I told them, I am given by my brother, pastor, and I'm going to help our people there. So, may God bless you. What you have been doing is not in vain. Many souls have been saved and many preachers have been trained because of the prayer and support of our Baptist Church. God bless you. And we appreciate all the food you supply, and, and we've been eating very well here, maybe too well, I don't know. And Brother Gideon, he's our, he's our chef, uh, he, he was a cook when he first came here, and he wasn't doing very good. And he, and he got on the phone with his wife, and she taught him how to cook real fast, and now he puts out really great meals, so he went from being a cook to being a chef. Amen. You got to find one of those hats, you know, <laughs> and have him walk around with that on his head. But we appreciate so much. Um, I want to sing a song for you at this time, and then we're going to have our brother come back with one last song that you were going to sing for us. And I'll share a gospel message here. And just I want to encourage you today uh, in your work for missions. And, um, and I can say amen to what brother George said, and I'll give you a few more details about uh, what he was talking about in just a minute. But um, the song I'd like to say is it was written, the words were written by a, a young man. Well, he was middle-aged, I guess. Uh, in Myanmar, Burma, he uh, did a, it was Paul Van Frey was his name. He went, he had got COVID back when COVID was running rampant in the world. And he had severe lung problems anyhow. And, uh, he, uh, he died from that, uh, went home to be with the Lord, I mean, that's what we say, amen. Uh, and, and so uh, he and his wife traveled with my wife and I for a summer years ago, and, and uh, we helped him raise some support. During that summer, he, he wrote three, he had three uh, poems, and I, so we put those three to music that summer and sang them around different areas. I'm gonna sing one of them for you here. But it's kind of a testimony of his life and how he um, was running from God. And you can only run so far. Amen? Because mm. when you're running, God's already there to meet you when you show up. <laughs> and he was. And the Lord just worked in his heart. And uh, he wrote this, this poem. It was just really a blessing. And I just want you to hear the words that be a blessing to your heart. Uh, I'll serve the Lord with all my heart, all my life. Because I only have one life to live. Why not give it to Jesus? Amen? Amen. Yes. My Lord, for all my life, I 
We bow our heads and hearts once again to you again today, Lord, because we, we need you. We need your help to preach this message, to take what we hear and apply it to our own hearts and lives. I thank you, Lord, for this church. I thank you, Lord, for Pastor Chuni and uh, bringing him in to, here to this area and spending his whole life uh, pastoring this church and reaching hundreds and hundreds of people for Christ Amen. through the years, Lord. And we pray, God, that you will just uh, bless the work that goes on. Lord, it seems small at times, but we know that every, every work is great if you're part of it. So I pray that you'll continue using Power Avenue Baptist Church and use our personal lives here Amen. to serve you and to honor you. Bless our, our, our pastors who are national pastors who are here and their works and pray that you preserve their works in their absence at home. And we pray God for their families as well and encourage them. As eldest now in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, when you come to the passage of Scripture we just read, there are some things that happened before this. I'll give you a little context of He didn't just launch out one day and say, I think I'll feed 5,000 people. No. Uh, first of all, Jesus and his disciples had just gotten word that John the Baptist had been beheaded by King, by, by King Herod. Mm -hmm. And he did that. He, he had him incarcerated. Uh, because he dared speak against uh, what the king was doing. The king was, took his, somebody else's wife as his own, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and John the Baptist said, that's wrong, you're living in adultery. Well, he didn't like that, so he put him in prison. And then you remember how uh, the young lady danced before the king, and he was taken up with her and asked her, I'll give you anything you want, and she went, ask her mama, mama, what do you want me to get him? What do you want me to get from the, the king? And she says, give me the head of John the Baptist on a platter. <laughs> and uh, and that's, that's what he had to do. And so John the Baptist was beheaded by King Herod. He gave his life for his faith. Uh, they just got word of that. Of course, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. Second cousin, actually. Because mm -hmm. Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. And uh, Mary gave birth to Jesus. Elizabeth gave birth to John the Baptist. You remember that? As a mouth of miracle, how it happened there. Then Jesus took his disciples by ship to a desert place outside the city of Bethsaida. He'd been ministering to people. He heard that John the Baptist had been killed, that, that no doubt bothered him and his disciples. And uh, Jesus was God, but he was also man. Mm -hmm. And he was touched with feelings of their infirmities. And, tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. So he felt sad at this great man of God who prepared the way for him to come with being killed like that. And so uh, he said, let's get away from a guy. Let's get away from a guy, wild fellas, and let's relax a little bit and, and just um, pray and, and spend time alone and, and get, some, get some rest. Well, they were, they were planning on doing that. They really intended to. And all of a sudden, the multitude shows up. Yeah. And Jesus starts teaching them. And he teaches them all day long. He's tired. He's wiped out. He's worn out. And they came, and, and he healed them. And he taught them the word of God. And, uh, and then, it comes toward the end of the day, the sun starts to go down. And the disciples are getting nervous. They said, got five, over 5,000 men here, plus women and children. He said, send them away, that they can rest somewhere, they get some lodging, and they get some food. Now, you don't have to see all that in this passage, but if you read Matthew 14, Mark 6, Luke 9, and John 6, you get the whole picture. <laughs> different things are said in different places, uh, but uh, through the whole thing, and I'm going to give you the whole story here. And finally, uh, Jesus said, um, they said, send them away. Jesus says, well, give you, them to, give you them to eat. And so Jesus, he, he performs a miracle, but he, he brings his disciples to the point of an impossibility. He says, I want you to do the impossible. Now, his disciples here gave two reasons why they should not do this. Number one, they said, uh, there's not enough money to pay 
to bring all these people food. Number one, and then he says, uh, we, 200 penny worth is just not sufficient. And then they said, we, what food we have is not enough. <laughs> Do you ever feel that way? How many have ever had more month than money? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. You come to, you know, you got these bills stacking up, and you say, we just don't have enough money to cover the bills this month. So I guess we just won't tithe this week. Huh. Where do we give to missions? Because, you know, we just can't afford it. But then you, you, know, you say, I'm going to go ahead and give my tithe and offering and give my missions money and see what God will do. And God always comes through, doesn't he? He always does. And so God's, Jesus is setting things up here to teach his disciples a very important lesson. The very important lesson is just simply this. When you don't know what to do, trust in God. Trust Jesus. He's always got the answer. He can do the impossible. His disciples were still learning this. They were still in training, weren't they? <laughs> and they, they, they had no time to eat, no time to rest. And they're, you know, sometimes when you, uh, you're tired, you're worn out, maybe hungry, and someone comes up and they need some help from you, they need you to minister to them in some way. You say, well, I'm tired, and I'm hungry, and I don't feel like it, and I'm not in a good mood on top of that. Now, leave me alone. And but God says, I may have a job for you to do right there. You do it while you're hungry. You do it while you're tired. Ask the preacher. He does it all the time. Amen? That's what ministry is all about, is you just keep going. Sometimes you don't feel like it. You just keep going. And God blesses you because of that. Now, they were in a desert place. There were no Walmarts around. There were no fast food restaurants. Uh, they had no place to go. They, was, they were in a desert area. So the, the place was not conducive to feeding people. It was, they had a place of grassy area, but still, there was nothing out there. There were towns and villages nearby, but it was a walk. The people were hungry. No access to food. An impossibility. So Jesus says, give you them to eat. And then he says, now there's, we got 5,000 5, people here. And the disciples said, you know, this is an impossibility, Jesus. We don't know what you're doing. But Jesus, the Bible says that he knew what he was going to do. He proved them. He said this to prove them in verse 6. He said, he said, when shall we find bread that these may eat? Philip, where are we going to find food that these may eat? Andrew, we got some food. Well, how much food? We only have five little loaves and two small fishes. But what are these among so many? How are we going to reach these people and feed them? How are we going to reach our world today? Eight and a half billion people and counting around our world today. More people alive today than ever been in the history of mankind. It's amazing. The number of people on this earth. How, yet, yet Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He gave that to his church. Aren't you glad that Fowler Avenue Baptist Church is not the only church in the world? <laughs> that would be a tall order for you. We'd have to put you all on planes and send you ten different directions and get to the world and give the gospel. But God didn't take, take just one church. He's got thousands and tens of thousands of churches. Someone said that this is Probably an old statistic, but a few years ago they said in America there are approximately 10,000 independent Baptist churches like this one here. Now that's not counting other groups, other organizations, missions agencies, and all that. But God has given the job to the church of Jesus Christ to send out missionaries and to reach the world. And listen, if every of the 10,000 independent Baptist churches, if they all would support missionaries like this church does, if they all would send people out and start churches in their area, we'd be bumping into each other all over the world, wouldn't we? Huh? That'd be a good problem to have, wouldn't it? Hey, I was here first. Yeah, but I was here second. <laughs> let's, let's get together and do the work of God. I believe God is actually reaching the world today. Missions is alive and well on planet Earth. And I can only speak for health ministries. We're in 70 countries of the world, supporting six, over 600 national pastors. 
We have no idea how many churches are being started every year or how many graduates are being graduated going out to start churches. We have no idea. We, we just, you know, we just round figures and we don't even close on that. There's so much more going on than we can ever know. But that's the work of God. Our job is just to do what we're supposed to do, when we're supposed to do it, and leave the results with God, and He will take care of it. Amen. Well, how are you supposed to feed 5,000 people? Well, Jesus said, get them all sitting down by 50s. Now, I took 5,000, and I divided it by 50. There are 100 groups of 50s, 50 people. And so 50 people here, 50 people there, 50 people here, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 100 groups of 50. That's a lot of people, isn't it, when you think about it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then he had 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. Now each disciple was supposed to take care of, uh, make me get my numbers right, eight companies each. Mm -hmm. Each disciple had to feed eight groups of 50 men. That took a little while, don't you think? Mm -hmm. And Jesus is over there, and he is multiplying the bread and the fish. What are they eating? They're eating fish sandwiches. Amen? Mm -hmm. You like fish sandwiches? That's bread and fish, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're, 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 they're busy, busy doing this work, and Jesus is just multiplying this as fast as he can. And they're putting them in baskets. I don't know where the baskets came from. Somebody must have brought one, maybe two or three or four of them. They had 12 baskets and they were out there and they're giving people. And it seems that as if they are, they are giving food to the people. And Brother Steve, he's hungry, so he's gonna, he's gonna take a couple handfuls, amen? And he takes a couple of handfuls, he starts eating and he takes some and he takes some and he takes some. And, and, and as the time goes on, the basket stays full. It just stays full. And people just read more they take out, the more appears. <laughs> That's our God, amen? amen? Whatever the need is, he takes care of it. So Jesus was there and he, he blessed the food or he gave thanks, the Bible says, for the food. And by the way, that's what we ought to do when we stop, when we stop to eat somewhere and we, we eat our fellowship dinners, we always pray, don't we? Why? Why do we do that? Because we recognize where it came from. Amen? Amen? Who put the food on the earth? God did. Who gave strength to the, 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 the farmers to go out and bring it in? Who gave wisdom for people to process it and package it and put it on the store shelves and, and run it in the tr by trucks and unload it and, and load it and load it and unload it and and get it on the shelves, and, uh, and, and then you walk in and you say, well, this is no problem, I just go buy food. And so it's a lot of work went into getting that stuff there. But God's the one that put it all in the field in the first place, amen? amen. And he put the animals here, whatever you're eating. Remember, remember, Lord, this is where it came from. It came from you, and I thank you for my food that I eat every day, because Without you, I would not have it. Amen. Oh, how we need to be thankful. Amen? Always be thankful for what God has done for you. He gave the food to the disciples, and then he gave the disciples to the multitude. The people all ate, and they were filled, and uh, there's a good picture of missions right there. God takes his church. He gives the church the bread of life. That is the gospel. Amen? Amen? And then he gives the people that have the bread, he gives them to the multitude to feed them the word of God. The Bible says here in verse 33, if you look at the end, end of this, this chapter, the last part of the chapter, verse 33, Jesus is speaking here, teaching about the bread of heaven. He says, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Who's that? Who came down, what bread came down from heaven and gave life to the world? Jesus, amen? Jesus is what he's talking about himself here. In verse 35, when Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. 
In verse 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Boy, you can't misunderstand what he just said there, can you? Now, he had just fed 5,000 literal bread. But now he's using what he just did to teach his disciples a very spiritual lesson here. And he says, you know, Moses gave you bread from heaven. And then he, he says, no, nah, it wasn't Moses. It was God that sent it down. Amen? They had men in the wilderness for 40 years. God put food on the ground for them. All they do is go out and pick it up every morning. And Jesus said, the Father hath sent bread from heaven. Me. God sent me from heaven. And people that partake of me, in verse 50, he says, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And Jesus gave his flesh when he died upon the cross of Calvary. Shed his precious blood that he could have everlasting life. Praise the Lord for that. These people, the 5,000 ate, and that meal was good for about one day. Dear friend, if you've trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that bread from heaven will last for eternity. Mm. It'll last for the rest of your life. When you get saved, I thank God for, for, the, for the truth of the Word of God that once we're saved, God holds on to us till we die. Mm. And He takes us to heaven and will never perish. Neither shall any man pluck us out of His hand. My Father which gave to me, Jesus says, is greater than all, and no man can pluck them out of my Father's hand. And then he says, I and my Father are one. Amen. And then he says, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Woo. I'll tell you, talking about security. You're in the hand of Jesus. You're double wrapped in the hand of God. They, they are one. You can't get out, slide out, slip out, be pulled out. Amen. And then you're, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. If there's nobody can take take your salvation from you. You have that bread from heaven, and it's there forever and forever and forever. Praise God for that. There's 12 baskets left over, though. Hmm. I've heard a lot of preachers on preach on that one, preacher. You probably, you probably preached your, your your three or four or five sermons on that before. I, I you know it's funny to hear people preach on this because. Everybody has different ideas of what happened to the 12 baskets. I heard one preacher say, I think what happened is they took the 12 disciples and each had a basket and they marched it right back to that boy and gave the, the food and marched right back to his house and gave it to the family. Now, the Bible doesn't say what happened to the 12 baskets. So that's just conjecture, okay? It makes for good preaching, I suppose, but it's not too biblical, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Well, each disciple had a basket. Maybe it was for them. Amen? I'd like to look at it a little different way. Maybe they had a little bit extra to get to somebody else. Amen? They're going to bump into some other people that maybe are hungry. Listen, when God gets done feeding the multitude that's in front of you, he has more bread for others. There are still other people that need the bread of life. That's what we call gospel tracts. Amen? You have a gospel tract. You take it. You leave it when you uh, go out to eat. You leave it with a good tip. Amen? And, um, and you, you go to the gas station and, and, uh, and you hit the button and, and it says it's printing your receipt and it does, nothing comes out. Right? And you know what you have to do then. You have to go inside and ask them for a receipt for pump number four. Right? That's a good thing because now you have an opportunity to give that cashier a gospel tract from your church and say, I want to give you something to tell you how much God loves you and cares for you. That's all you have to say. The tract will do the rest. Amen? They don't have time to sit there and read it anyhow right then. And sometimes I'll say, hey, when you get a break, here's some good reading material for you. Amen? This will tell you how you go to heaven when you die. Wow. You know, I had people almost in tears sometimes saying, thank you. You don't know how much I needed to hear that today. 
That just really blessed me, really helped me. You run into Christians, they'll say, oh, I already know Jesus is my Savior, praise the Lord. And I said, well, give it to somebody, give it to a friend, give it to somebody else. And you know, you can't give the gospel to the wrong person. Mm -hmm. The bread of life needs to go out there, amen? And, and you have a part in that. Well, how are we going to reach the 8 million people that are on the face of the earth? Let me give you four quick thoughts here. Number one, <clears throat> follow Jesus. The disciples saw the feeding of the 5,000 because they were with him. They followed him. Just can you imagine one disciple says, I'm out of here. I'm not feeding nobody. I'm not giving it. I'm not giving to an offering to feed these people either. I'm, 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 I'm out of here. And they take off running and say, I'm going to go feed myself somewhere and I don't care about anybody else. No, they stayed right with Jesus. They didn't know what was going to happen. They thought the worst. And Jesus did the best, and they had missed out on it if they hadn't been with Jesus. Amen. So follow close to Jesus. Say, Lord, is there somebody you want me to feed today? Is there somebody you want me to give the gospel to today? B, where the opportunities are, and the opportunities are always with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Number two, see the need. See the need. Get a vision. The disciples saw a bunch of hungry people. Jesus saw a bunch of lost, hungry people. <laughs> the disciples said, this is a problem too big for us. Send the multitude away. Jesus said, no, I love them. I have compassion for them. Feed them. Disciples said, we can't do it. And that is a great place to be when you realize you cannot do anything of yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. I need God for everything I do. Amen. I need God to travel. I just came back from Kenya, Africa. I was there twice this year. Once in January, once in August. And I spent time with our brother George. And, and I was trusting God the whole way over. Amen. All these Amen. flights and connections. And it's like 25 hours to get over there. It was crazy. Amen. And, and then I got in the car with Brother George. Now, I'm driving him around here, but he drove me around in Africa. <laughs> the roads were not nearly as good. A lot of times the roads were smooth, but there's no lines on the roads. There's no middle line, there's no side lines, there's no exits, there's no red lights, there's no stop signs, there's no yield signs. All you have is you're going down the road, is a big hump in the middle of the road every now and then, four or five miles. You get to slow down, otherwise you turn the bottom out of your car. Yeah, and sometimes they're not even, not even, uh, you know, they're very clear, clearly marked at all. And he just been there so much, he just knows where they are, even in the nighttime. And so we're driving along, and all of a sudden he starts, what are you stopping for? Oh, there's a whole and off we go. And that's how they, they regulate the, 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 the traffic there, is just hopes in the road. And, but it works for them, amen? And, but I'll tell you what, I, I'm, I'm seeing cars coming at me, and all oh, these guys, I don't know what they do. They, they have a truck in front of you, they look around the side and say, oh, i got plenty of time to get, get around that guy before that guy comes. And, and so they take off, they take off in the other lane. And then they're just passing that. <laughs> and, um, and there's motorcycles coming. Now, if you have a car and there's a motorcycle coming, you got first dibs, okay? It doesn't matter if you're in their lane. They gotta get off the road because you're bigger than they are. If there's a truck coming and you're a car, you give in to them because they're bigger than you are, okay? They'll flatten you in a heartbeat, okay? So, um, and, and so they're out there and going like this and, and, and driving, driving around. And, and in January, I was, I was in Nairobi and traveled around with brother Edward Morella. Oh man, he, he is worse than them, let me tell you. Uh, Edward is a nutcase, okay? He is just crazy. He's, he's on their bumpers, man. He's backing around. And, and I'm saying, oh, I'm glad my wife is not here. She would have a heart attack every turn of the road, just about, you know? And God brought us through it, amen? I mean, God takes care of you. If you're doing his will. Amen. Brother George is a good driver, I have to say. He's a good driver. Let's follow Jesus. See the need. See the vision. God's vision is for people. Then thirdly, give what you have. Give yourself. Give your service. I want to thank this church and Pastor Chuning for 
the ministry you have had in missions over the last almost 30 years now. Next year will be 30 years. Wow. Yeah. And I don't know how many of those years you've hosted national pastors here, but it's been more than 25, I'm sure. Um, I've been coming here 12 years. In the 12 years, I can only talk about the 12 years I've been here. He can add, you can add to this. In the 12 years I've come here, I've got a list of all the national pastors that I've taught a course to while I was here. I've got a list of 104 national pastors from 24 different countries have been in this building, have been fed by you people. You have invested over and over every single year, invested, invested, invested. And you know, sometimes we, we start crying the blues, we say, well, I mean, we don't have anybody here, and there's so many people, and God's keeping track. Amen. Amen? God's not looking for churches with gigantic attendance. He's looking for churches with gigantic hearts. Amen? Amen? Amen. This is one of those churches that have a big heart for people. Some of you stop in and ask us, you want to need anything to eat? What do you need? Ask me and I'll get it for you. And then you run around and get it for us. Wow. Uh, I said, God bless you. And, and one lady says, God's already blessed me so much. You know, I'm just passing it on. Amen? And it's wonderful. But give him what you have. What do you have? Find out what you have in your hand and give it. Give the missions through your local church here. Um, and then last of all, let God use you. Give what you've been given. Give the gospel. Let God just say, God, how do you want to use me Amen. to reach the eight billion people in the world? Mm -hmm. How do you want to use me? You just, you just show me what to do and I will do it. Amen? Follow Jesus. See the need. Give what you have. And let him use you. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Shall we? Father, we thank you for your feeding of the 5,000, Lord, and how you give us examples of how we can reach our world for you. First of all, it looks like an impossibility, and it is, humanly speaking, no question about it. Amen. But you routinely do the impossible. And you wouldn't tell us there's something that wasn't possible to do with your help. Amen. So we ask for your help. We ask for your leadership in our lives. We ask, Lord, if someone's here that has never had the gospel, never believed on Jesus Christ as Savior, someone listening by uh, online, Lord, that, that's heard the, heard the message today. It says, I don't know Jesus. I need the bread of life. I need Jesus in my heart and life. And they need to take him by faith. I pray that they'll do that. That they'll bow their head right now and then say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself, but I believe you died for me. Amen. Come into my heart and save me. I ask the Lord that you do that for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tom, God bless you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> We're so thankful for the tremendous message that has been given to us as we do every time we have the service and the video going out. We go through the same routine. So there's a lot of duplication, a lot of repeat, but this is something way we throw the service out. We do not know who's watching. We do not know who's listening. We're thankful for those who are here today. But if you're doubting your salvation, you're not sure, today is the day of salvation. Amen. Don't put it off. There may not be a tomorrow. We have today. Do not gamble with your soul. Right now we know that you're alive and you've heard the message. Those listening, those who are watching, you want to say, I want to know Jesus as my personal Savior. Not just know about him and know of him. You want to know that he's the one that came into this world and died for you, shed his blood and rose again. And you must take it personally. Preacher can't save you, your mom or dad. The only one that can save you is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the one who died. He's the one who came from heaven. He's the one who took our sin upon himself, went to Calvary, and there he shed his blood. Died on that third day. Amen. He rose again, conquering death, hell, and the grave. Praise God Amen. for our redemption. That's in Jesus Christ. Yes. And so we say to you, if you're doubting it, set it right now. Drive that stake down. Reaffirm your faith. Do not, do not linger. Don't, don't procrastinate. 
Don't put it off. Today is the day of salvation. Make sure you know that you know you've asked Christ to come into your heart and save you. He says, these things are written that you might know that you have eternal life. Amen. And this life is in His Son, the Lord Jesus. If you have Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have eternal life. You have forgiveness of sin. And that's why Jesus came. And so right now, as we close the service out, those that may doubt or not sure, you who are observing, watching, pray this simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God and died on that cross and shed your blood. On the third day you rose again. You did all the work. I'm not trusting religion. I'm not trusting the word of baptism. I'm not trusting some pope or some preacher. Jesus, you did it all. I'm asking you to come into my heart and save me today. Thank you for the salvation that you provide through your death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart and save me. Amen. Father, those that have done that, may they find a good Bible-believing church. Get in and begin to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. May they get into the Word of God and grow and develop. And Father, we who know Christ as Savior, help us to be the ambassadors heaven's representatives would have us to be. Help us be. Father, we're, we're, we're laborers together with God. We're workers together with Him. What, not, what a privilege to be servants of the Lord. Help us, Father, to be faithful servants, dedicated, determined, decisive. Lord, help us to love you and to serve you and to be faithful unto you. No matter how hard it gets, no matter what we face, we know that you're the conqueror. Greater is he that is in the house than is in the world. Amen. We thank you, Father. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty to God pulling down strongholds. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, save me. Come into my heart. Thank you for doing that. We give you praise and glory. And help us now, Father, to go forth and be what we ought to be. We ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen.